Hello everyone. In this video we are going to discuss the concept of observability for linear state space models, which is an important concept in order to understand when we are able to get full state information just from input and output information. So in very brief and simplified words, observability is all about the question if we observe some outputs y of t and some inputs u of t over a limited time span from t0 towards t0 plus capital T, are we able to uniquely uh, obtain the starting state x0 from where this trajectory of inputs and outputs have been observed? So in other words, are we able to get full state information by observing inputs and outputs? Why is that important? We have seen from the previous discussions that in the state space models we basically differentiate between the measurable outputs and the states and the states are basically the information memory cells so to speak, the important information about the system and normally for many data-driven identification techniques it is beneficial to get information to this entire state uh, vector to this entire state information. So therefore this question if we are able to map the inputs and outputs towards the state information will be important for many data-driven identification and also state estimation techniques. In order to answer this question, if we are able to uniquely distinct S0 based on some observations, we make use out of the exact solution of linear state space models from one of the previous videos, which was y of t is identical to c times e a t times x0 plus c integral from 0 to t e a t minus tau times b times u tau d tau plus d u t. From this we can basically identify some terms. The first term is basically here on the right hand side our measurement y of t. Of course in this context of observability we assume that y of t is known, right? So this is basically a known quantity to us so we can basically make a checkbox on that. Here, this part, the forced response, which I call Y forced, which is only dependent on the inputs U of T. This is of course in the context of observability also known because we have assumed, or we are assuming, that U of T is an information which we have available in order trying to estimate x0. So therefore we can also check that and say okay this part, the system response due to the forced inputs is also known. And the only thing where we do not really know if we are able to retrieve this information uh, exactly and uniquely is this free response y3 which we need to investigate more closely. What we can definitely do from this equation is basically we can solve for y free our free response which is as I said somehow unknown or should be investigated if we're able to retrieve this information. So we can basically rearrange that and say y free of t is identical to c e a t times x0 and that must be identical to y of t minus y forced of t and for sake of simplicity I'm just calling this also y tilde. So y tilde, as mentioned, is a known quantity because we know y, we know y forced, so y tilde is also known. So the question is now, are we able to get information out of this y tilde in order to basically calculate back towards x0? 
And in order to do that, what we basically will do now in the following is the approach of measuring different, at different time points here in our inputs and outputs. So this could be a time point T1, T2, and so on. And we basically will set up something like a data matrix. Okay, therefore, the right hand side will be basically y tilde, so the sum or the difference between y and y forced at different time points, y t1 until y tilde tn. So this is basically the measurements at these different time points, which is depending on y of t, and y forced of t, of course, needs this information about the inputs. So the inputs are basically inside y forced of t. And on the right hand side, I therefore get c times e a times t1 until c times e a tn. And this x0 can be basically multiplied from the right hand side. Now the question is, can I obtain from this data information a in distinct solution regarding x0? And in order to answer this question, we will first investigate a simple case, the scalar case, where we assume that we will have just one output. So this would be an r to the power of n vector. So this is basically a big, big vector. And if we can assume that this matrix here will be basically a square matrix with n times m elements. And then, basically, the question is quite simple. If this matrix C e a to the power of t1 until C e a to the power of t n is invertible, so if that has full rank, and let's assume that this would be possible, and I call this the matrix psi. So let's say the rank of psi would be full, so would be n, let's assume that, then of course what we would get is a direct solution, right? Because x0 in this case would be just psi inverted, which I can do because it has full rank and it is square, times this data vector, this measurement vector here on the right hand side, y tilde t1 until y tilde tn, right? So in this case, if psi has full rank, we would get an uh, explicit solution and we could actually calculate x0. So in this case, the system would be observable. So therefore, the question is actually, how can we get information if psi, so this right hand side of this data equation basically, really has full rank. And in order to answer this question, we will have a more closer look into the matrix properties of this matrix psi in the following video.